Hey guys, it's Nicholas and Brody from Wasabi Capital here in New Zealand. We have just changed the owner keys on our EOS accounts and we thought we'd make a quick video showing you our process for doing it and what we consider to be our best practice across the accounts that, that we control. It's a little bit tricky, so hoping this uh, video helps you. Yep. Let video, uh, Brody video it while I uh, attempt to push the keys. So the first bit is we're using scatter and then using one password to record all of our uh, passwords and public and private keys. So the first thing you want to do is, so I've copied here, uh, this is for my account nicholas.e, I've copied in the public and private key pair, or the sorry active key pair and the owner key pair. So once you've got those at the start, they're always uh, the same as how they usually start out. And so then you need to generate keys and in scatter, you just, I'll go back and show you again. So in scatter there, you're just gonna hit add keys. And all we wanna do is generate a key pair and save that key pair to better use to switch out from the one that the account currently has. So you just hit key and there it is producing a nice key. I'm going to click copy on that. Which that's being the public key. And over here in one password, and I'm using it on a tablet to make it a bit easier to follow. So I'm just going to go under, I'm going to change the owner key. And in most cases you want to retain the active key because that's what you've been using up until now to move things around and you just want to change the owner out so that you've got um, good control of the funds in your account with a new nice new owner key so you're going to go add field and one password you hit text just because we want the public key to present as it does up here and be visible i'm going to call this new public key and then i i have clicked copy here because this is Mac and both are Apple devices, I can click paste. And we just check that the two are the same, checking usually uh, the last four digits and it is correct. I'm gonna save that by going done. Then I'm going to go back into it again and now save in a new field. And this time I'm gonna make it um, appear as dots, so you click password and then name this new private key and when you click reveal, now remember you only have one opportunity to do this, you need to record these keys before you go out of this page, otherwise it doesn't show you again, so you'll need to go back through that process and create another key so you click reveal and it's going to give you your private key and again click copy and then I'm going to paste it here into one password and again I'm going to check the first four characters and the last four. That's correct. So saving that. So now I've got my two new owner uh, keys public and private. So the next step, when you click back, here's part of our process, I'm going to name this key pair. Let's see, EOS, Nicholas, I can spell my own name right. And I'm going to call this new owner. You'll see later on why it's good to name these account, uh, these keys, so it's nice and clear within Scatter which keys you're you're working with. So now you'll see it come up the bottom, and there's the the key pair that I've just created. Right. So the next step then is to go into permissions to change. And just to be clear there too, that new owner key is not linked to anything. It's just a it's just a public private key pair which has been generated. 
yeah so not linked at all we go into the one that is linked so there it is is the owner of this nicholas.e account and then down here you've got change permissions so when i click on that you'll need to put in your main password for scatter desktop as you're going into a dangerous area that's why it comes up with your red lock so this is your change account permissions and in here you need to make sure that you're selecting the account that you're working with so nicholas.e for both the owner and active boxes even though for active we're going to leave that alone so if you just leave it blank it won't change the active key at all and it's just the owner up here that we do want to change so my, our process is to delete that and then go and copy it the new public key from one password that we just generated before copy paste and again so you can slide the cursor along and check your your first four and last four digits that they are the correct key and then finally we're going to ch click change permissions here's where you really need to pay attention as it's throwing up nice warnings here so you want to check that you are dealing with the correct account and here's what's going to be changed correct account and then check the key again you can slide left or right to check those first four and last four digits and it is correct and down the bottom we're changing the owner permission so that all looks good click allow transactions gone through we can now go back and under new owner now this is automatically popped up so the account is now being controlled by the new owner key pair and the last step is to name this again as owner so it's real clear that that's the owner key So that's our process. We have done lots of different accounts in the last few days. It can be pretty daunting work at first, but once you get a feel for it and what the different boxes do, then you can get into a nice flow for, for changing accounts and hope that helps. See you from Wasabi Capital New Zealand.